Hello and welcome back to Print and Play. And today I'll be showing you how you can easily integrate a rotary encoder into your next Raspberry Pi Pico project. But before we get started, let's take a quick overview as to how a rotary encoder works. This is a 3D model to show you how the inside of a rotary encoder works. So as you can see, we have three contacts. In this case, we have a black common contact, which is connected to this inner rotating piece. Then we have a yellow and a red. So in this case, our red is going to be our trigger and our yellow is going to be our direction pin. So if we select the center pin and then begin to rotate it, what you'll see is that it will make contact with those pins. So if I rotate left, it makes contact with the trigger pin first. If we then check this on our Pico, we'll see that yes, the trigger pin has been fired, but the direction pin has not. This means that it had to rotate left. If on the other hand, we rotate right, it makes contact with the direction pin here, but we're not checking for that. When we finally get to the red pin, we can see that in fact, both have been hit. And in this case, that means that it's been turning right. So just by reading these two values, we can tell which direction it's moved in and it's quite simple. And now with the knowledge of how a rotary encoder works on the inside, we can go ahead and wire up our circuit like this. Now for this example, I'll be using a Pico running circuit Python, but the knowledge is transferable to MicroPython as well. So we'll start off by installing our Pico on our breadboard and also installing our rotary encoder. Now what you'll notice is that this has five pins on it, but the only ones we're actually interested in are clock or our button one, our direction pin DT or our button two and ground. So go ahead and install this onto our breadboard and then we're going to wire up our clock pin to GP17 on the Pi, our direction pin up to GP16, and finally we'll wire up our ground up to one of the ground pins on the Pico. From here, we can go ahead and wire up our USB connection and test out the code. So now let's take a look at the code that will allow our Pico to read our rotary encoder. And it's actually quite simple. The first thing we do is import board and digital IO so that we can get the board definition and also be able to read and write to digital pins. Next, we define our direction pin as GP16 and our step pin as GP17. And then we define both of those as input pins. Next, we enable pull up on those pins so that they will always read high except for when they're being grounded out when we turn the rotary encoder. Finally, we have a variable that will keep track of what the previous state of our step pin is. While one equals equals one creates an endless loop for us, and then we check to see if the previous value is different than the current value of our step pin. If the step pin is currently reading as false, meaning it's grounded out or triggered, then we're going to check the direction pin. If the direction pin is also reading false, then we know that the dial was turned left. If the step pin has been triggered, but the direction pin is not, then we know it was turned right. Then we store the current value of the step pin into the previous value so we can keep track of when it changes. So then if we go ahead and run the code and I turn my rotary encoder to the left, we get to the left, to the left. And if I turn it to the right, we get to the right, to the right. And it really is just that simple. All right, guys, well, I hope you found this helpful. If you have an idea for a future video, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.